What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion video for you. So today's video is a little bit different. Yesterday, Twin Motion um, released a video on their channel talking about some of the new features contained inside of Twin Motion 2020. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video kind of talking through some of the features that I saw on that chant or on that video um, that we might be able to expect in Twin Motion 2020. So a few things about this video. First of all, this is just me analyzing a video that they put out on their channel. I don't know anything about the new features. If anything's guaranteed, everything could change from now moving forward. This is literally just me watching the video and commenting on what's different that I'm seeing on the screen from what we have right now. So I have no idea if there's other features in the mix, if they've changed other things. I'm just looking at what they've put out and uh, kind of getting an idea of what looks different. So I will link to this video in the notes down below so you can watch the whole thing yourself. It's actually a really good presentation from Autodesk University. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the first thing I was really excited about is they started talking about their new model library. So they've added new models from Quixel. So if you remember uh, last year, Twin Mo or, uh, Epic Games acquired Quixel. And one of the things that Quixel has is a great photo scan library of different uh, vegetation. And it looks like some of those have been incorporated inside of Twin Motion 2020. So if you look at like these ferns and other things like that, these are highly detailed, really great looking models that it looks like are going to be contained inside of the model library. I am super excited about this to see what's in there because some of those assets are ridiculously detailed. So super excited about that. So thing number two is it looks like they've given you the ability to adjust the age of different trees inside of your twin motion rendering as well. So you can see how in this video, it looks like you can change the age of those trees and they get taller or shorter um, inside of the model, which is really exciting. And not only do they get taller or shorter, like they're not not just scaling these, you can see how the shape of the tree seems to change along with this. And then not only can you do this from this feature, but later on they're going to show a feature where you can change the age of an entire forest to make your growth taller or less tall depending on what you want. So this is a great way to be able to um, resize and customize your different trees and objects inside of Twin Motion. And so it looks like they've also added a new tool in here for vegetation spread. So from what I can tell, it looks like you select a surface and you select models kind of like we did with the paint tool, but you can select a surface. So you can see how he goes in and he basically clicks on a surface and this adds the trees that you've selected in here. So I am super excited about this as well because the paint function, which appears to still be in there, is great, but this one really gives you the ability to spread things across the surface quickly so you don't have to go in and do all of that manually. So as you can see, he's created an entire forest just by adding a couple trees and then clicking on the surface. So I am really excited to see this one and kind of play around with it. So and again, this is just going off what I'm seeing, but you can see how this came in here and this spread these across this whole surface and he was able to add all the different plants and all the different rocks just by clicking on the surface. So that could be a huge time saver. Um, for creating these different forests and contexts. But then this next thing is something I'm really excited about. It looks like there's now the ability to use that vegetation paint with grass on surfaces as well. So if you remember before, what you had to do is you had to add the grass and then paint it in. Um, well now, what you can do is it looks like you can just click on the surface and just drop this in here. So you don't have to paint everything in like you did before. You can just use the vegetation paint tool on a surface or on an object. It was unclear to me if this is based on the materials that you have in here or if the way your objects are grouped, but it looks like it could be a great new tool. So it also looks like they've reworked the weather toolbar. Best as I can tell, it seems like most of the change inside the weather tools is just kind of a UI change. So it looks like instead of having these things on top of each other, they've placed them side by side. It looks like the features are pretty much the same. You change the seasons and then you change the weather in here. The one thing I did notice on the right hand side is that growth function. So the growth function allows you to adjust the size of your different 
trees all at once. So instead of going in and adjusting that growth function yourself or, or adjusting it for every single tree, it looks like you can use that growth function to change your forests from like young growth to old growth. So you can see how as he clicks this slider up, the trees get taller and they look older and more developed. So you can make your forest very old looking or very young looking depending on the look that you're going for. So being able to adjust all this as one, at once would be very powerful. So another thing that I noticed, and uh, I'm gonna pause this in a second because it only pops up for a second, but something that I noticed is it looks like they've added the ability to preview your images when you're exporting them. So when he clicks on this button right here, and I'll pause this video, you can see how where before you just got a list of the different named images, it looks like there's an area in here that gives you a preview of those images, which I think could be super helpful because before you were just kind of looking for names and it was really easy to export the wrong image. But if you have the ability to actually see thumbnails of those, I really like that as a UI change. So I'm really interested to see if that's going to stay, but I really like it um, because of the confusion factor that was there before of just trying to pick by name. So another thing he talks about is the revised depth of field settings. So it looks like they've really improved the depth of field camera. So you can see how as he works with this, there's actually a tool in here that you can use in order to set the focus of the camera. And you can see how this is a really pronounced um, focus, meaning you can create much better depth of field stuff. So it looks like they've really improved the depth of field, which I think is going to be a really great thing for the kinds of images you can export. So this next one just pops up for a second, so I gotta make sure to pause it on this, but under the effects, so it looks like there's a new feature in your weather settings where you can turn the particles on and off. Um, again, seems like a small addition, but I really like that because before I don't know that there was necessarily a way to turn those particles off when you were adjusting your weather settings. Like sometimes you want it to look rainy or snowy, but you don't necessarily want particles in the foreground of your image. So I would assume, and I didn't actually see him demonstrate this, but I would assume that this gives you the ability to flip those particles on and off depending on what you want your image to look like. I don't believe that that was in the previous version. So it looks like they've also reworked the uh, the sequencing of the video editor. So from what I can see, it looks like they've taken everything and instead of having a bunch of clips off to the side and then a little timeline, they've made it more linear. And from what I can tell, it looks like they've also set it up where you can see your different videos all linearly in this image. So um, like for example, if you wanted, like this would be one video, but then you can also add another one off to the side. So I'm not 100% sure on how that works, but it looks like they've taken the, um, I think it was the video and the clips and kind of combined them into a single thing. So I'm not 100% sure exactly how that works, but it looks like it's gonna be a lot easier to use. As you can see here, he's got a video part one and a video part two, so you can add the different parts in the video settings itself without having to click out of your clips or anything like that. So it looks like they've consolidated this into a more easy to use interface, which I think is gonna be really good for creating videos inside of Twinmotion. All right, so X-ray materials. It looks like they've added the ability to um, set materials as X-ray materials. And what that means is you go inside of your material settings and it looks like you can set these so that they show through your geometry. So like if you're trying to indicate things like water or um, like uh, sanitary lines or something like that. If you've got MEP, if you click on this x-ray option, it looks like it lets these things show through um, from the background. So this could be really good for visualizing like this image shows like where all your water lines go or where your utilities are. Um, so that's a really powerful feature as well if you're doing anything with like MEP systems or something like that. So they also showed a notes function. So it looks like they've added the ability to add text notes inside of your image. So you can go in here and you can actually add a note that says something like change glass material or whatever text notes you want to, uh, whatever text notes you want to use. And they noted in this video, you can also export these back to like Revit. So people can actually comment from inside of the actual twin motion image and those will actually go over into Revit and you can see those. So being able to add notes in here, it's more of a construction and visualization function probably, but it's still a really nice feature 
to have if you have multiple people looking at this and making different comments and things like that. All right, so from what I can tell, it looks like there's also new characters in this character library. So in the humans function, these are different models than what I have in my library. So these may have been revised. And again, maybe my library just looks different, but um, from what I can tell, these look like different models. So they may have upgraded or changed those. And then finally, he talked about the new presenter function. So it looks like the new presenter function is something that you can export. It looks like it's different than the BIM motion was before. So um, you can basically create a presentation and you can export it. But what it does is it takes a couple different images, but it exports them as the actual model itself. So what you can do is you can set this up as like slides, but it's like a 3D slideshow. So for each slide, you can export this and send it to somebody and then they can actually fly around the model or they can just move between the different images. So it's almost like a slideshow inside of a 3D model from what I can see. So this could be really valuable if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to visualize different scenes for people and send them to them, um, you could do that. So, and I think it's just the BIM motion function, but it might've been rebranded. I don't know that for sure, but either way, being able to export this standalone where you can kind of move, move people between different scenes um, is really powerful. So you can see how there's the different images on there and they can click on them. And then when they click on them, they can move between the different images. They can also navigate the 3D modeling themselves. So a couple things I didn't see mentioned in the video, and that doesn't mean that they're going to do anything with them or not. They didn't talk anything about any kind of ray tracing. They didn't talk about any kind of like interoperability with Unreal Engine or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. That doesn't mean that will or won't be a feature. It just wasn't talked about in this presentation. Obviously this presentation at Autodesk University is probably more designed to introduce people to twin motion and its uh, functions. So that might've just been something that they didn't necessarily talk about, or it may not be something that comes up in the next release. I don't have any idea. I don't have any information on that, but this was kind of a summary of what I saw in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you're excited about, um, what you liked about what you saw, what you'd like to see in Twin Motion 2020. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.